have a final contribution from each of the three candidates. Uh, could we start with Michelle Gildernew? Okay, well, um, I think this is a very important election, Denzel. Um, I think there are a lot of issues out there. There are issues John mentioned earlier about Irish language speakers in the constituency and issues around that. There are issues around jobs, and we have the Quinn workers who are at the moment increasingly concerned about whether or not they'll have a job in the coming weeks and months. And there are issues around pensioners who feel that um, they, they have to make decisions about heating and eating. There are issues around farmers who feel that the Tories get in, then a lot of the, the, the best and most popular schemes that we've been able to deliver will be gone. And this is, this is a worrying time for a lot of people, given the, the extent of cuts. We have seen a global recession. We have seen um, parties working together in the north, as, as has been pointed out, trying to overcome those. We've seen some very good ideas coming through, and we want to be able to, to bring those forward. But I think, ultimately, in this election, people need to look at the person who's best able to represent them. And I feel that my role, my record, over the past decade has been um, second to none. And um, the point that Liam made, I uh, think, was interesting about how we work together. I think it was very noticeable in a recent poll where a majority of unionists felt that the, the person they had most confidence in in the executive was Martin McGuinness, followed closely by myself. And I thought that was very encouraging. We have so much to do. We have so much to, to, to be able to deliver. We want the next big project for us now, after having the transfer of policing and justice powers devolved, the next big project is to get devolution of fiscal powers that we can have the ability to make decisions based on what is best for our people. And there are savings to be made around in bringing together an All-Ireland economy, harmonising on, on some of the, the tax regimes that we have and encouraging people back to work. And there is an okay. awful lot more to be done, <coughs> but we have to recognise the big issue in this election are jobs. And I think the last word for me would be around the issue of Quinns and, and how those people are feeling at the minute and what we need to do to deliver for them. OK. Fergal. And Michelle makes the case for me about going to Westminster because she's looking for the very powers that she sees as important being devolved eventually to Northern Ireland. So she sees value there. And can also add that uh, in relation to what Rodney was talking about before, uh, about uh, um, uh, facilities and, and services locally. The multi, uh, um, there's a, a multi-deprivation index that uh, the government produces regularly. And it shows that divided communities fare least well in Northern Ireland. To your point, I have a vision for the people of Fermanagh South Rome, and it's a vision where we, prosperous, united, and working together, can achieve even more. I think that tourism, particularly, is an area that we should start uh, to look at more. And I think because of the size of the population that we have here, uh, we won't be able to lever the kind of infrastructural developments that we need here so urgently. And we will be able to do it through furthering tourism, but in a really joined up way, because we can ask then if there's a net benefit here. We can ask for better roads. We can ask for better communications. We can ask for We're better... delivering better roads, Connor. Fergal, sorry, that was Connor Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> Those roads, by the way, were the, signed off on by direct rural ministers before Connor Murphy came in. So that's mm -hmm. uh, he's only just doing Not the work of somebody else. And by the way, we have some of the worst roads in Fermanagh. I've travelled them a lot of them, and they've torn the tyres off my car. I can tell you. So the vision I see there is using those communications and that better infrastructure to connect particularly the, uh, the vulnerable and the old okay, for people in our community. Uh, uh, well, I think Michelle did get a longer okay. time. No, so, I wrap up. Um, so I think we need, to be, we need to be able to think in a joined up way. And John, on your point, it will be the voters ultimately of Fermanagh South Tyrone. The pact is there with the assumption that everyone will herd. That won't happen. Everyone is not in agreement. I know, because I'm the one that's getting the emails and the telephone calls from unionists. I'm the one whose people, who, who, who people are approaching and stopping their cars and saying, we like what you have to say. And that's from unionists, and that's from Republicans, and it's from nationalists. It will be the voters of Fermanagh South Tyrone who will unite and say, we too have a vision for this constituency that isn't about division, but is about jobs, is about prosperity, is about a shared future. 
and we didn't take the easy road. We took the right road. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> I think I give you more extra time than Alex Ferguson, but still. <laughs> uh, uh, Rodney Connor. Daniel, I'll finish the way I started. The people of this area, the people of this constituency, must have representation. I will give them that representation. I'll give them that strong voice. I will be in a better position than anyone else to influence the major decisions that will be made by whichever party forms the new government. I will be there, if I'm elected, to put forward our case. The big issues we have to face are the economy. I mean, that, that is the issue. We must work on the economy, and in particular, we must build the private sector. In order to do that, we need the changes that I've already alluded to earlier this evening. And the only way we can, those decisions are all made in Westminster. We must be there, we must be able to use our influence to the best possible effect for the people in Fermanagh and South Tyrone. Okay, folks, that's, that's the end of proceedings. Could I just finish off by thanking all five candidates uh, for coming along and giving their time? I know they've been busy on the campaign, etc. Uh, but mostly I'd like to thank yourselves for engaging in debate. I hope most of your questions were answered. If they weren't, <clears throat> my advice to you is bone them. Bone them. <laughs> <laughs> ask them on the doorsteps, ask them wherever. Uh, but thanks very much for your attendance, folks, and uh, all the best for the 6th of May, everybody. Thank you.